It's taken a long time for Bobby Wallbank to tell her story, but the former Penthouse Pet of the Year feels now is the right time. She's been closely following the newspaper scandal in England, knowing too well the tricks used by the tabloids to get a story. Dog eat dog, cut throat, stab people in the back. My carver was that I was a model from Australia. The more I did for the story, the more I would get paid. I would record telephone conversations, I would be wired, my handbag would be wired. Do you think the paper put your life at risk? Definitely. They know they did. They told me they did. Her real name is Bronwyn. But she's better known as Bobby Wallbank, the penthouse pet. For 20 years, she's kept a secret about her incredible double life. This former glamour girl from the burbs of Brisbane was an undercover informant for the notorious British tabloids. When you heard about this News of the World scandal, were you surprised? I was laughing. I was just completely laughing that they're pretending like they don't know. Bobby had been a successful model since the age of 16, but in her early 20s she wanted a new challenge and money to fulfil a dream to travel to London. She sent off a photo to Penthouse and they arranged a photo shoot. I just wanted to do it anonymously, get the money, go overseas. But Bobby soon found she was in the running to be crowned Penthouse Pet of the Year. The Australian Penthouse Pet of the Year is the first Aboriginal set of all. Back in the mid-80s, before the advent of the supermodel, it was a big deal and big news. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming on again. Do you think you know yet what the pressure's going to be like? Oh, I don't see it as any heavy pressure. I mean, it's only pressure if it gets to you. What was that like, winning that award? Amazing. I had no idea I was going to win. There was 14 girls, there was two Miss Decembers and a mother and daughter centrefold, so the competition was tough. Being a penthouse pet also opened doors to some of the 80s' biggest stars. I think the first one was Sting. Myself and two of the other penthouse pets found ourselves in Sting's presidential suite for the night and I knew I had an early call so I left early. I can't say what happened between the other girls and Sting but I do know that the press were very interested and did lots of follow-up stories and every time Sting's name was mentioned in the press it would have penthouse pet loving Sting <laughs> for a few years. <laughs> What happened with Gary Kemp? What was it like on the road with Spandau Ballet? One of the penthouse pets started a relationship with one of the band members and she lived in Melbourne and she said, why don't you come to Melbourne with me, book into the, uh, the Melbourne Hilton and let's hang out with Spandau Ballet. And of course I had my eye on Gary because he was very cute and he immediately was attracted to me and so we just started dating. Were they very popular at the time? extremely. We'd get mobbed getting into the car, fans throwing themselves on the bonnet of the car, bashing on the back window. So yeah, it was a taste of what it was like to be famous. A rare treat for fans of rock group U2 with an unscheduled public appearance in Sydney today. The world's most popular band signed autographs outside a city hotel. What happened when you met Bono? Well, it was in the lobby bar here in the Intercontinental and he asked me up to his room. What went on in there? Lots of talking, he played guitar to me, we sat on the couch together, he took his shoes off and put his feet on my lap. So no shenanigans? No, no shenanigans. The world was moving, she was it was in London when the real wild time started. Sex, drugs, rock and roll and the British tabloids. What was life like for you girls? It was amazing. We gate crashed the most amazing parties where you'd have Princess Diana and, you know, all these kind of people rubbing shoulders with them. Madonna, 
Boy George, David Lee Roth, Rob Lowe. She partied with them all. It was wild. It was way beyond anyone's imagination. What you see in the movies doesn't even half portray the drugs and the mad, you know, sex orgies and swingers parties. But when you're living that life and you see it, it's just amazing that you know that that goes on. Following a trip home to Australia, it was Bobby who made the headlines after being dumped by her English boyfriend. I get back there and he's dating a page three girl. So being a page three girl and loving the publicity, she took the story to uh, the sun and they ran a story on me titled, I'm hounded by my lover's jealous ex. And then when that appeared, I rang the sun and said, it's all lies. I want to tell my side of the story. And then when I went to be interviewed, I told them how I used to date Gary Kemp. And so I started negotiating a story. What, what was the story about? Say. Shake hands and come out fight. When he was in Melbourne, he found out he was going to play one of the Cray brothers in the movie. You should have done it, Reggie. So they said, let's all go out shooting today. And I had a photograph of myself with Gary Kemp with him holding a gun. And the whole story was based around that photograph. So you realised you had stories from your past, past that, that you could, could make money from. It was the start of a lucrative new career, earning Bobby up to $17,000 a story. What about secrets of the topless grapple girls? <laughs> I found the story in like a, a Australian magazine that put the backpackers on the street advertising for girls to do wrestling. So you wrestled in a G-string to get a story for the paper? Red plastic G-string. I was Sheila from Australia in the red corner with a spit bucket and everything. The Wigmore Club in London's fashionable West End reportedly has politicians... The father of Fergie, the Duchess of York, had been exposed as a regular of an exclusive London brothel and it had apparently been shut down. Six months down the track, I find out that my sister is friends with a girl that's working in this club. So they used me for about a month doing surveillance, all kinds of things, recordings. So the story was that the Wigmore Club had reopened. It had reopened. After the scandal. And so the Sunday Mirror run the title, uh, They're at it again. And uh, photographs of the women coming out of their houses, you know, shame. Bobby says there were other more dangerous jobs. She allowed herself to be recruited by a pimp to help smash a prostitution ring in an exclusive London nightclub. She also seduced rich Iranians and recorded their conversations. And the paper expected you to go back to the room, room on your own? And have sex. And the more I did for the story, the more I would get paid. If I, if I participated in... Uh, drugs with them, if I participated in sex with them, and anything I did extra, any extra information that I got, I would get more money. So some of the stories you did were really risky and Very, dealing with criminals. Yes. I did quite a few stories like that where I put my life on the line and it got to the point where I had to leave London for good. Where did it all end? When we first were there, everyone wanted to know us. We were like, you know, celebrity and we could get into all the parties. By the end of it, no one wanted to talk to us. So we'd made all this money, we had all this fabulous life, and it just came to the end of the road. Hi, Hi Terry. How are you? Good. 20 what years on, for? Bobby couldn't be further from her party oh, days. This proud mum is now a successful Aboriginal artist. When you look back at the dirty tricks that you got up to with the papers, do you have any regrets? I wouldn't say regrets about the whole situation because we made so much money and had such a great life. I'd say the only regret was making people feel the way they did when I did the stories on them because I had it done to me so yeah that would be the only regret. How would you describe the tactics you use to get stories for the paper? Just dirty, filthy, street level, you know, dog eat dog, cutthroat, stab people in the back. Would you do those things to I'm people? I'm the person no? that I am today, you know. Not everyone goes through their whole life being nice and doing the right thing. I was living the high life of someone of rich and famous and I was just a girl from Brisbane. So I can't say that I regret anything. You just got to leave everything behind and just go for it.